Hey, it's Kevin DeWitt here. Recently, I did a video on gain staging and I tried to explain everything that I could about it and how I use it in the mixing process and what gauge staging means to me. And I had a few questions uh, come back from some people that watched the videos and I guess I just wanted to do another quick run through of it in a different style here. So I'm going to attempt to show you sort of the end-to-end -end process of uh, a guitar track or a group of guitar tracks because that's more important. We need to see what happens when we hit the buses as well. So I'm going to show you the individual tracks but then also how they group together and how we gain stage from that perspective as well. So uh, we're going to look at that in Cubase here. So if you're using another DAW then please take the information I provide and translate it as best you can into your DAW. The concepts here should be adaptable to any DAW and any situation within reason. So if you haven't watched the other video, then check that out. I'll put the link in the comments below. And let's get into it. All right, so we've got a song here, and this song has several electric guitar tracks and several acoustic tracks. So my first steps with gain staging is to look at the individual tracks themselves. Now, as I've done in the past, I have used the Slate Virtual Console channel. And that has a VU meter on it, which is set to minus 18 dB. So when I usually start my gain staging, I'll target zero on here, unless I want to go for a distortion effect. But at this stage, we're just assuming we don't want to add any sort of effect, but I want to get uh, the, the, the natural feel of this plugin out of it without distortion or clipping or anything like that. So I'm going to target zero VU. We can obviously translate this onto our meters here as well at a different level, but we're going to be looking at the same concept here. We don't want to be sitting up here at zero, right? So if I target what it should look like on this meter, then that should give us an idea of what we should target here if we weren't using this plugin. So if we just solo the acoustic guitar first off, Okay, let's have a listen to the acoustic guitar now. So you'll see there I'm pretty much targeting zero. And you'll see... that in this case here I've already dropped the level. So if we put it back... So let's put it back to zero and let's have a look at the level when it was a zero. So you see there, it's pegging out on the meter. And if we look at our track here, if I was to put that up to zero, let's, I'm just gonna drop the mix bus down so we don't get too loud. You'll see here on the Cubase meter, it's quite high. Here's zero, this line. We're very high up there. Okay, so that makes me a little bit uncomfortable because we are compressing in this situation here. So that could quite easily peak over that level. Okay, so obviously what I did was I then adjusted the, the clip gain down to a level where we got to zero. So you see it peaks up a little bit there, here and there, but primarily it's pretty low. And if we go back to our mix window here, you 
you can see we're sitting around here now. So I'm a lot more comfortable with that. We've got a lot more headroom. We've got pretty much very little chance of this actually going and clipping. So I go through that same steps. I'm not going to show you it, but we go through that same steps with every one of these individual tracks. All right. Because you will see that, you know, this one here doesn't have any clip gain because it was recorded lower. This one has some. This one doesn't. That one doesn't. That one does. All right, so it depended on the track to whether it got reduced or not. So I go through and I do each one of those. So they're all sitting right at the level here, or if we're not using this plugin, they're all sitting right at the level on the meter. Okay, that's with the fader at zero, all right? Or you have to change your fader to show you pre-fader signals, your, your meter there. Now, the routing of this setup here is that all of these tracks now go to the guitar bus track, which is this one here. Guitar bus group or bus, whatever you want to call it. So they all route to here. Now, if I was doing individual tracks, I could come in here and again, I could have a look at this meter or in my instance here, I have again the virtual channel. Look, I could have a look at that. Okay, but that's quite low. So if I adjusted this volume, because I want it to hit that zero, again, because I want to get, you know, the right levels through this plug-in, or the right levels on this channel here. Okay, so I could have that level there. The problem is, is that this is a bus that's combining all these tracks. So if I did that for every individual track, what generally then happens is when the two are combined, you see the level now on the meter is going into the red. Now you imagine if I was in a section here where if we say this part here, where we've got all these guitars and this acoustic. So you can see there, they're fairly low, right? So if I was to actually have pushed all of these up. Let's say we push them all up because I gain stage them all individually through the bus. Again, let's keep the main bus down. Okay, now we're sitting up very high and we are clipping. We've got the red lights coming on this plug in mad. It's clipping like mad. Okay. And it's very high on this meter here. And the reason it's maybe not clipping on this meter is because of these plugins. They're probably actually controlling it and keeping them blocked from going too high. See, now with the plugins disabled, you can see we are going into the yellow, and in theory, we're potentially clipping. We've got 1.3. Okay, so we've got some headroom in Cubase that this is still maybe not going to be a problem, but it's not something I'm really comfortable with. And when you add these plugins in, I become even more less comfortable with because these plugins here are emulating analog circuits. So they, in definition, will emulate distortion when they are clipping. And you may not want distortion. Okay, so in that case there, that is where you need to start 
to adjust your faders appropriately to get the levels. So you might mix this and go, okay, I like the balance between all of the tracks. So let's say you did that and you went, okay, this is my balance. I like this the way it is. These are all mixed nicely. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to play it and I'm going to check and I go, okay, it's hitting the master, the mix bus here, the guitar bus, too heavy. So I'm going to select all these tracks and I'm going to bring them all down. And I'm going to do that while it's playing. And I'm going to get it to zero. So now we've gained stage two items. We've gained stage the first part, our individual tracks, and now we've gained stage our bus. Then the final step is going to be gain staging on our mix bus. Now in this case here, if this is all we had, it would be quite simple because we would just say, well, whatever level this is, this mix, this guitar bus is going to feed into this mix bus at the same level. So again, I've got another plugin on here that's going to do that. All right, so you could push it harder if you wanted to, if you wanted to get that meter there up to zero. Okay, so in theory there, when that's on zero or it's hitting our meter here in a nice spot, we're happy that we've gain staged this bus. The issue is, is what you're not seeing here is, is that there's a whole lot of other buses for all the other instrumentation. So what we did here on these individual tracks to balance them on this bus, we do the same thing with all of our buses going into the mix bus. So this is the process of doing the end to end. So step one, clip gain your individual tracks feeding into the, the into the track itself onto the meter or onto your first plugin. Once you've done that, create your mix between the various tracks, right? Do a little bit of mixing, get it the way you want it to sound across all of your instrumentation. Then look at your next step in the chain. This is step two, which is your buses. So if you have all your guitars going to a guitar bus, gain stage the guitar bus. You have all your drums going to a drum bus, gain stage the drum bus. Vocals to a vocal bus, gain stage the vocal bus. Once you've done all of your buses, then you're going to look at your final output. And again, you're going to have, it's all going to be relative. So you're going to have to have your mix right, right? You don't want to go and move your vocal track up and down and make it sound horrible. You want them to be comparative. So you want your vocals sitting in the right spot compared to your drums, your bass, your guitars. Once you've done all that, then you want to take the entire load of your buses and with them combined into your mix bus, you then want to check the level of that. And then what you're going to do is what, the same thing I did on these instrument tracks. You're going to take all the buses and you're going to bring them up or down in their relative state to feed the mix bus. So for instance, let's show that step. Okay, so I'm going to now take off and hide most of the tracks, but I'm going to turn on all the buses. So now I have all my buses. I'm just going to turn that automation off now. And I'm going to unsolo this. So what we're going to do now is again, I'm just going to drop the volume of that. So these are all relative, okay? Now, they're all gain stage, so every single one of these is gain stage. And let's just say, I'm going to bring it up really hot. So when we look at our first plug-in here, we're clipping. Okay, and in theory, we're getting 
distortion and unwanted distortion because we are clipping. If I had this meter turned up, or if I turned it, let me see if I can work this out. Okay, so I turn this meter into input. You can see how high this signal is feeding into this. Okay, so that's bad. We don't want that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I select all my buses and I bring them down relative. So I'm moving them all in their relative state. And I'm going to bring them down to a level. It's nice on the meter here. Okay, and nice on this plugin. So that could come down a little bit more. Keep in mind that we could probably go a little bit hotter on here because I do have a limiter. And we might want to just, just touch this limiter a little bit just to get some tiny little peaks off. That might be okay. That might be what you want to go for. Or you might be more comfortable having it really low and having lots of room on your meter. And worry about pushing things up when you get to the mastering stage such. So it depends how hot you want to run your final output. But you can see here that is a lot better result than when we had it up here. And we're getting this. Because getting that, you're going to start getting distortion. Especially if I was to turn off these two plugins, including the limiter. then you're potentially going to get really bad results. Okay, so we don't want that. So we want to balance that there. And that's our final there. Okay, so that's basically the end-to-end -end state that we want to do in Cubase here for gain staging. So if you follow those steps then you shouldn't have any problem with any unwanted distortion or any unwanted digital clipping or anybody complaining that your song's been mixed too loud and there's too much uh, unwanted limiting or anything like that. So hopefully this has made things very clear. If not, uh, ask a question and I will uh, attempt to answer it as soon as I can. Thanks for watching the video. If you've got any questions, leave them below or comments. Love to hear from you. If you'd like to request any other videos, also put them in the comments. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the, cha the channel. Just hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of the future videos. And hopefully this has been helpful. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.